This week on the CBS series Whistleblower, Alex Ferrer, a former Miami-Dade judge, examines the case against the defense contractor Northrop, now known as Northrop Grumman. An Illinois man who was in charge of tracking inventory discovered Northrop was systematically overcharging the government for critical parts used in the military's most advanced aircraft. Host Alex Ferrer joins us live now from New York. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to be with you, Lauren. Thank you. All right. So we know that sometimes in some of these whistleblower cases, it takes a long time for the whistleblowers to even come forward. In this case, it took 17 years to even resolve this case. Why so long? Well, because you were dealing with one of the biggest military contractors in the world, and they took on a scorched earth defense, and the litigation dragged out. His youngest daughter, he had five kids. His youngest daughter was three when the case started. She was 20 when the case ended. And during the course of that, they lived through everything that you could imagine. It's one of the most fascinating whistleblower stories that, I, that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of them making this show. Hmm. I'm sure it certainly impacted his family a lot over the past two decades or so. So let's talk about the things that that family went through. This whistleblower says that his house was broken into, his phones were tapped, other unexplained incidents with his car. Was he being paranoid or what was really going on here? Oh, he was not being paranoid. Those things happened. His, his, uh, the federal uh, agency he was working with swept his house for bugs and found three times they found his phones were wiretapped at home. A professional burglarized his home, didn't take anything, only went through the evidence he had collected against Northrop. His cars, his, his car, his daughter's car, his son's car, all had the, the front right wheel tampered with and it fell off while they were driving it. Now, he'll, he'll tell you he has no idea who did it. He has no evidence to prove who did it. Uh, and Northrop denies that they had any involvement in it at all. But you can imagine those kids growing up as, as preteen and teenagers with that fear every day. Uh, it's just, it's unbelievable what he did in order to do what was right. And these whistleblowers can be anyone. If they see something that seems not right to them, they could take action. But uh, this gentleman in particular, did he have any sort of special training or before he started gathering the secret evidence? He did not. He didn't have any training. He just realized his father had told him long ago, when is it wrong to do what's right? And he knew he had found the fraud. He reported it internally. He was told, just stop investigating. And then he just said, no, this, this is wrong. And he started smuggling out documents, taping them to his body and his legs, because this was a really secure facility. It's, a, it's the corporation that built the F-15 fighter, the B-1 bomber, the B-2 stealth bomber. There's a lot of, it's a top secret facility. And he, he smuggled out all the evidence that the government needed to make a case and work together with the Defense Department. During the course of this, he and his five uh, kids and his wife lost their home. They ended up homeless in a homeless shelter. Uh, it's, it's just an, an amazing story. You're going to hear from them when they talk about it for the very first time. They're going to talk about what it was like with themselves over all this period of time. They never have sat down and talked about what it was like going through that as a family. Wow. His daughter pulling the blinds down because she was afraid someone was going to shoot him through the window when she was 16 years old. So terrifying for a lot of these whistleblowers to come forward. Alex Ferrer, thanks so much for joining us. Looking forward to seeing this fascinating case unfold. Thank you. And be sure to thanks, catch Lauren. tomorrow night's episode of Whistleblower at 8 p.m. right here on CBS4.